All right, check it out. Inside this jar is, boom, this here is a clownfish. You may be familiar with one of these. They're those kind of orange and white tropical fish. I'm pretty sure that this one is a female because it's pretty large, but here's the thing. It wasn't always a female. Hmm. Because clownfish society is kind of split up into some very interesting hierarchies. The, the fish at the very top is the female clownfish, and all of the fish underneath are males. But here's the thing. If you take, whoops, the female clownfish and remove it, you know, it dies, it passes away, it leaves for whatever reason. The second clownfish, the most dominant male, the second one in the hierarchy, will transition and become the female at the top. It switches genders and everyone else underneath kind of moves up one ranking. This is interesting for a couple reasons. It means that one, all clownfish are born male and only some, the ones at the very tippy top of the social hierarchy will transition and become female. But I think what's more interesting is think about this within the context of Finding Nemo. At the very beginning of the movie, Nemo's mom gets absolutely wrecked by a barracuda and dies. That's, <laughs> but yes, she passes away. So theoretically speaking, if Finding Nemo follows the rules of clownfish society, then Nemo's dad should now be Nemo's mom. Today we're talking about animals that switch genders over the course of their life. The scientific term for this is sequential hermaphrodites. Hermaphrodite is a term that, I don't know, is kind of sketchy to use in, in just regular conversations, but we still use it in science. So sequential hermaphrodites are animals that can switch genders over the course of their life. When we talk about genders, we're talking about whether they contribute an egg or a sperm to reproduction. So females uh, contribute an egg and then males contribute a sperm. So these are animals that can switch over the course of their life. The clownfish, we had an example of uh, an animal that switches from males to females. But let's pull out one that switches from females to males. Okay, I got it right here. Big boy. <laughs> we'll pump in on that tag. It's Semicosophus reticulatus. This is an Asian sheep's head wrasse. This is kind of like the opposite of clownfish. All Asian sheep's head wrasse are born as females, and then over the course of their life, some will transition and become males. But when they transition, why they transition, and kind of the consequences for Asian sheep's head wrasse uh, uh, societies and communities is kind of interesting. So let's take a look. I'm pretty sure this is a female Asian sheep's head wrasse because here's a photo of a male. They have those kind of super bulbous foreheads and bulbous chins. And you can see that these ones are, if we push in, pretty flat up here too. So Asian sheep's head wrasse society functions as like as a harem. You have a male that dominates a whole territory and will mate with all of the females in that territory. The thing is, after a while, if a female reaches a certain size, it will transition into a male and then could potentially fight the resident male for ownership over that territory and the right to mate with all of the other females. Imagine the situation that the male is in. You're mating with these females who will potentially transition into males and fight you for your own territory. It's kind of crazy. Here's another animal that transitions from female to male over the course of his life. This is a different fish. If we look at it, we got Thalassoma bifasciatum. This is a blue-headed wrasse. The cool thing about these animals are they are sexually dimorphic, so the males and females look a little bit different. I think I have some males and females in here. Yeah, okay, who? cool. So this is what a male looks like if we push it up. Um, they have that kind of vertical stripe right there. They've lost their color because they've been preserved for so long, but here's what they look like in the wild. They got that nice blue head, and the females look very different. I'm gonna pull one out right here. Yeah, nice, see? They got that stripe. They don't really have that blue head. Here they are side by side. So theoretically, when you think about it, when one of those females on the bottom transitions and becomes one of the males on the top, they undergo a color change. So these are very like linear changes that we've discussed so far, you know, male to female or female to male. But there's definitely not any fish that can transition both ways, right? Well, no, there are. <laughs> Behold. We have uh, Gobiotom verticulatus. This is the broad barred goby. These ones are a little bit smaller. Let's pull one out and take a look. Here he is. He's so tiny and petite. So these guys can transition from male to female or female to male. Again, the question, when and why? 
Well, it all has to do with um, mating. <clears throat> so two broadbarred gobies meet in real life, and uh, they decide to colonize a piece of coral and create a nice, wonderful life for themselves. Um, they can, even if they're the same gender. So if two males meet, all that will happen was uh, one will transition and become a female. It's that simple. And then if this other one kind of, I don't know, passes away and dies, then this one wants to establish a new life and a new piece of coral, meet somebody new, and that other goby happens to be a female, then it can just transition back and become a male. They can do this over the course of their life, kind of like again and again and again. So it's all for um, mating purposes. If they're the same gender, then one just kind of switches and they make it work. <laughs> These are interesting stories. Again, you know, as humans, we kind of think that everything is very binary, male or, and, and female, and we kind of assume that all animals live kind of like what we do. But the interesting thing is, it's not that simple. A lot of animals switch over the course of their life, and gender switching is, is just the beginning. I mean, there are species that are entirely female and that just reproduce clonally. There are species that, um, I don't know, practice incest or cannibalize their babies or exclusively eat poop. Animals do a lot of interesting things that we think is weird, but it's kind of common for them for survival. So if you want to see a video about um, something specific, just let me know in the comments. But don't click away until we go over this last example because I think it's it's the most interesting. Hypoplectris unicolor. This is a yellow hamlet, which is, again, a type of fish. This one looks so nice. Check out this bad boy. Excellent. So yellow hamlets aren't uh, sequential hermaphrodites. Instead, they're synchronous hermaphrodites, meaning they always kind of possess the ability to contribute an egg or a sperm to reproduction. They're male and female all the time. There's a particular hamlet, I think it's called the black hamlet, that engages in a very interesting mating routine. Let me set this scene for you. Okay, it's at night. Two black hamlets meet and they decide to get romantic with each other. <laughs> they meet under the cover of darkness. As the sun is setting, one hamlet will assume the role of a female and do this little mating kind of fold over the other hamlet. The other hamlet will assume the role of male and uh, ch contribute sperm, to be totally frank. <laughs> they'll mate and they'll uh, have a dandy old time and then they'll depart. But we're not done because <gasps> the very next night... As the sun sets again, our two fish lovers will meet once more. Except this time, they'll switch gender roles. The one who is a female now will become a male. And the one who was a male now will assume the role of a female, at least in that mating fish folding ritual. This process is called egg swapping. They kind of switch off. I just like the fact that they do it over the course of a couple nights. They go on a couple fish dates. The black hamlets do it over the course of a few nights, but there are other hamlets, like this yellow one that I just pulled out, that can do it um, over the course of the same night, like 20 different times. It's like bing, bang, boom. Now you're a male, now you're a female. Let's just make some babies and, and get done with it. You know what I mean? That's what I always say. <laughs> Thanks for checking this out. Think about watching this video and let me know what you'd like to see next. Oh, also subscribe. Thanks. See ya.